Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Today, I want to talk about something that I think is a very, very important subject, and the subject is possibly the most scientific effort ever made in cryptozoological history. It was announced a little while ago that a team of scientists from pretty much all over the world, places like Australia, New Zealand, France, Denmark, would be coming together to initiate a project that holds the promise, or at least the possibility, of answering the question of the Loch Ness Monsters once and for all. The project is being helmed by Neil Gemmel, who is a professor in the Department of Anatomy in New Zealand's Otago University. The international research will test the water's environmental DNA next month. If we find a sequence that is unknown to science, and there may be sequences that we'll find, then that will um, open up possibilities for us to explore further and find out exactly what it is. I mean, I don't know if we find a monster, but we might find a new bacteria that nobody's ever described before through its DNA sequence, and that could be that could be equally important from a scientific point of view. Along with Adrian Shines, who many of you may know, he's a very popular proponent in the Loch Ness Monster subject, who not only has conducted very good research in the past, but also is known for being a proponent that the Loch Ness Monsters are a psychological phenomenon rather than a physical species. What creature might be in Loch Ness? Uh, for my own from my own personal point of view, I don't actually start there. I start with what are people seeing? And that is what, what we study now. It's a question of what are people seeing rather than what sort of animal is the Loch Ness Monster? We don't know whether there is one. Uh, people see things that they describe as large animals. I mean, boat wakes contribute a lot. Water birds contribute a certain amount. Boats contribute to certain sightings. Animals, well, of course, the, the, the perennial favorite has to be the Jurassic creatures, the reptiles contemporary with the dinosaurs. The plesiosaur is the, is the main candidate, I suppose. But the water's terribly cold here. Um, I don't think it's Jurassic Park, but it is a lost world because some of the creatures living right down at the bottom are Ice Age relict species. They're happier in Arctic streams, but here they find refuge in the cold water. It's about the temperature of your domestic refrigerator down at the bottom. The project is currently going underway, and it involves the use of eDNA sampling. For those of you who may be unaware of what eDNA is, I know that I was before I read up on the subject. eDNA stands for environmental DNA, and the way that works is as a living being moves through its environment, it leaves behind small DNA samples. These samples can be on a very molecular level, very microscopic, or they can be something as big as a hair sample or even a spit of skin tissue. And again, these DNA imprints are left pretty much wherever an animal moves. So you can imagine, there's a lot of eDNA out there to be collected. Practically endless amounts, really. So what Neil Gemmel and Adrian Shine's team is doing is they're going to sweep over Loch Ness, collecting around 200 samples, each one being taken every so often at a certain distance, I would assume. And once all their samples are collected, they're going to sift through them to see if any unknown samples are coming up. And really, this isn't just a search for the Loch Ness Monster. This is an effort to understand the Loch more efficiently. Adrian Shines especially has been a proponent not just for the psychological side of the cryptid phenomenon, but for the importance of Loch Ness despite that. He's long been interested in the Loch because of its massive depth, and even though the Loch Ness Monster does not exactly exist in Adrian Shines' mind, he certainly does believe that there is importance to understanding the species inside the lock better. Now, this process is going to take a little while, meaning that the results are expected to come in earliest in January of 2019. So we're about almost a year out, really, from, uh, from really understanding what's going on there. But what's so important about this project is how scientifically efficient it is. Aside from perhaps the Snellgrove Lake incident, which I will cover in another video, perhaps, this is single-handedly the most scientific effort ever made in the history of cryptozoology. It could very well be the test that gives us an absolutely definitive answer as to whether or not there are large plesiosaur-like unknown species living in Loch Ness. And I think that either answer, yes or no, would be a very, very significant discovery. If the answer is no, we are faced with the first real definitive possibility that 
this cryptid phenomenon is purely psychological. And I think that that would warrant a great amount of research and could be extremely important to understanding the cryptid phenomenon. On the other hand, if a species similar to the Loch Ness Monster in any regard really is discovered, we have on our hands the most important biological discovery of the century. Either way, I, as I'm sure the rest of the world, eagerly await the results of Gemmel and Shine's testing. And I hope to see everyone stays on top of the subject to know about updates and to further understand what's going on there. That being said, until next time.